Welcome back to another one of our Good to Great series, and in this one we're going to look at Elsted Heath by CD06. Um, Charlie's been a huge part of the design community since he joined. He's really enthusiastic about all aspects of design, and this is his best course, I think, to date, um, and really looking forward to his first in the new game. So, based on Heathland courses in the UK, um, I grew up playing a Heathland course, um, so I kind of have a lot of and I've played quite a number of them, so I know a lot of the influences he's drawing from. Um, we're, we're expecting kind of low-profile land movement, subtle hole designs. Obviously, the heather is the thing that people will spot as like the distinctive visual feature, but there's like some very distinctive hole and strategy styles that we could be expecting as well. Um, so first of all, I really like the texture choices. I think that works so nicely in terms of where you put the wide light, light rough as well because that really frames the whole corridors nicely. And you can see, uh, even from way up here, you get the impression of that like, heavery, um, I guess Heathland uh, is the word I'm, I'm struggling to find. Um, looking at the routing, obviously we've got a number of greens packed together. I will say it looks like we've got quite a lot of parallel holes. So that might be one thing I would try to tweak. Um, it's a good use of the land, but and it can work really nicely, say, for example, you come down this hole and you get a big view of this hole as well. That's really nice. And some something like Sunningdale, I want to say on the old five and six, maybe uh, do this um, or six overlook seven. It's around that point. Um, but you don't want to overdo it. And also, if you can tack around, you'll get a greater variety of different winds and shots and things. Um, I have played this one before, so but not in this game. So I'm looking forward to how it plays, particularly in this game. So you've got lots of open views and kind of minimal tree planting in the middle, which is what we like to see. Um, and actually, I think you could still thin the trees that you have out a little more yet. But yeah, looking forward to this. I mean, the, the ground planting, I remember he was asking a lot of questions about this when he was doing it. It starts out very, very busy. I think you could probably thin it out a little bit more, and it's tricky with how it's obviously muted lighting then makes everything even darker but you kind of need it for the sunlight i think where it is here looks really really good it's just how you manage the darker patches which we can talk about clubhouse lovely really understated works nicely i think the choices of buildings you've used have been great and we've got a clock no less um so i'm going to leap onto the first tree first t even oh yeah okay First tee shot's kind of straightforward. The green is just canted right to left, so we probably want to be more on this side, which makes sense with the bunkers. I think you probably want a little bit more influencing. This is the influencing way we play our tee shots. This is a really good example of, like, I would expect this as a real-life hole, and it would be a really good real-life hole. Um, but in-game, we need a little bit more, like, I guess gaming the angles to make that decision a bit clearer. You are going to have a harder time from this side of the fairway than this side, but I think the ease at which it is to just bomb one straight down there kind of reduces that a little bit. Love the little patches of heather that we've got. Um, I mean, I would be sinking it, but I appreciate that's a real time sink, particularly on console. Uh, that's not a good swing, so we are going to find a bunker is good but on this side of the fairway i'm kind of okay with it um, and one thing you'll notice is that this bunk bush in front of me is a pain in the in the format obvious with porting um because this bush decided to rotate itself 180 degrees so you either have to go and do that manually to get it back to where you originally placed it or just live with it i am completely understandable i completely understand the decision to live with it um, we're not in between clubs, but we don't have a great lie. That should, well, maybe I need a bit more. It's an underwhelming bit of play on this first hole. The green itself, I'm not sure how much I love this slope at the back, just kind of taking you off. I think just generally i probably want you holding here and then dipping off and like a really clear runoff it feels like it's just because anything getting caught up here is probably going off the green which i don't think is what you want otherwise though the general slopes and like i like that there are parts of the green that are really steeply contoured and parts that aren't that's very 
That's very authentic of a Heathland course. I would massively overestimate it and overhit that. Really like night like this first view back up of the clubhouse. I wonder whether you can bring that view of the clubhouse in a little more as we carry on. Interesting, we've only got one par five on the front line, not a typical of Heathland courses. So second hole, we are playing in the same direction, so we're hitting straight down. And it's kind of similar in that we can just, these two bunkers pinch us a little bit, but with this driver, we're taking out over all of that trouble. I think with a shorter driver, this would play more interestingly. Um, and that's part of how the game is developed from this the previous version to this version. So I haven't got all of that drive and we're still pretty comfortably clearing the bunkers. The little bunker in front of the green looks awesome. I like that you haven't put Heather on every single bunker. Um, and this green feels like literally a mirror image of the first. Um, which is okay, but I think I probably would have spaced them out or they just they feel quite similar as holes other than the distance. I think again we're looking at the name of the series, oh, that's an awful shot. Name of the series being good to great, we've missed in totally the wrong spot. Again. Um but what are we doing to kind of potentially lift this from of course, that is good, and yeah, I could. I was never holding it on that top. Part. Um, to something that might contend in contests, I think you want something that's going to really grab you from a playability standpoint. Both of these first two holes play really, really well, but my question would be, what is their defining identity? Like at the end of the round, you're going to think, oh yeah, it was that hole where I had that throw shot or that tee shot, or asked me this question. I don't think either of those two holes. They're both really well done, but I don't think they really do that. This one does a little bit more because the cross bunkers give it much more character. Um, and we've got a pushed up green, which is a little different. So I'm glad we've done that. We've also got one that's kind of based around this little saddle in the middle, which I really like. And this is my favorite green so far. The first two were good, but I really like this one. Um, again, dry, off the tee, he says, probably pushing one into a bunker. Off the tee, <laughs> if your tempo's on, this is not a difficult course. I'm just having an absolute nightmare with it. Um, I We're right up against the lip. The heathery look hasn't caught it as well as it could have done because of the lack of sinking and the bushes rotating. And I know from trying to port Wickham how much effort and time that takes. Again, that's the sort of thing with contests. It's like the difference between a contest winning environment and one that's just good is like it's a lot of work for relatively minimal gain. I do like the ferns that we brought in as well. I maybe just a the one other thing I might like would be just more spots of planting rather than we've got kind of the same bit of planting of just like there's some ferns, there's some heather, there's some bushes. And then we just rinse and repeat everywhere. Like if we can clump a little bit more, if you look at guys like Jamie and Scottish and what they do, I'd say those are the, and Reeve are the three best planters probably for me in the game. If you look at what they do, it tends to be clumping stuff together and then it creates slightly more distinctive environments rather than, um, I guess, like everything looks pretty homogenous. Another bogey. And having said this, that I would tighten up both tee shots or give a little more to think about. I've played both of those appallingly badly. This looks great. Um, kind of similar green to the last with this one in that it works down towards the back and then down towards the front. It's kind of tiered but not. I would definitely be losing this slope because that's going to play awkwardly in this game. Same here, like the red slopes that run you off the edge of the green here as well. They play less well in this game. I love the area we are playing into here and kind of the space you've given. It feels like we're playing to the corner of the property, which is, I always really like it kind of gives a feeling of like that boundary. Okay, slightly uphill, slightly into. Felt like I was likely to hit a fast, but we just pulled it instead. 
Yeah, and there we've caught one of those little slopes that I don't think we'd want to really end up chipping from. But it's okay. I don't really have much to add with this one. That's just a solid golf hole. I think that's going to be my mantra with this course. It's all really solid. It's how are you taking those ideas and making them really arresting and like make you think of like what we're doing on each hole and how that works. Because I still feel driver is pretty much the play on most holes, which is not... We've ended up in a bunker again, I think. Which is not a bad thing by any means, but driver down the middle of the fairway in a video game should not necessarily always be the play. Uh, obviously, we should have laid up and had a full wedge in. But my short game is abysmal. I like the angle of that green. I think I might have kicked the fairway out a little bit left further to allow you to maybe hit towards the corner for the angle and then you hit. So, like, let's go back. So let's, on a straight hole, hitting dead straight is going to generate you the best angle, right? Whereas laying back, yes, we've got a full wedge, but, and yes, laying back to here is better than laying back to here, but you've also taken up this this layout, layout out by putting these two bunkers in. So we could have bunkered more this way, or we could have dog-legged it more. If you dog-leg it more, then playing to the extremity or the apex of the dog-leg also encourages you to hit more at the edge and you're potentially running through to rough. I mean, it's light rough, so it's not going to make a huge difference, but you could have put bunkers on the outside of the dog leg, perhaps. Those sorts of things would have given it a bit of a different feel, because I like where you've angled the green. I like the bunkers here. I think those parts of the hole work really, really well. Um, which is kind of a tee shot tacked onto it, rather than the tee shot necessarily making the most of what you've done with the green side. Um, more of a push-up green again kind of falling off on both sides which is always tricky i mean i think it makes sense hopefully we actually do just hit one straight down the middle of the fairway for a change and here the closer you place those bunkers the better an angle you have in the solitary par five on the front um, I like this green is very subtle and I would probably have a few more like it feels just a bit awkward in where it's sloping and that we've created these bunkers in the front and then it's dropping down immediately after them we've got a, cra a little plateau here and then dropping off the back and dropping this way and everything in my mind says we push the land up this way it should be falling this way which would further encourage your strategy off the tee because a shot played from this side is going to be running away from you. From this side, you're kind of holding it against the slope a little bit more and getting around the bunker. I think the three cross bunkers, I'd like to see Heather on these or separate them. They feel a little awkward in how they're jutting in. I don't dislike them, plus the sculpting with how flat the course is. You can't really get a great visual on the second one. So you could have just had the first one and like maybe cutting in here and here and then had fairway between them. But there's a different ways in which you could have accomplished it. 188 with wind up 13. Yeah, fine. Go find a bunker. Okay. We had to land it short for that pin. It's about as good as I can do. Pretty happy with that shot. Nice. Love that I got the little view of the clubhouse through there. And like the big views on this course are great. You can just see little flags all around you as you look. So we've kind of reached a high point, as much as this course has one. And you get that great view all the way back to the clubhouse. Like that's awesome. Can't get away. Can't clear those bogeys. Hopefully clear one of them, yeah. Planting from this view looks great. Love being able to see that flag in the background. That gives that big picture environment that you want. This one's a nice green. It's just really straightforward, simple, what you would want on this tour of the hull. Wow. 
we've given a bit of space to run it on if we need to, but generally it's just collecting and slowing down your tee shot. That is a bad swing. But again, like kind of gathered towards the pin, got a bit of back to front, so we've now got a sidewinder, which I am completely okay with. No, nope. greens are tricky. Like they don't look like they're that challenging, but there's a lot of there's a lot of slope, and you want to be in the right spots. So I'd say they're the real defense of this course. Okay, so we've got camber going down this way, and we are going to fall off if we're too far on this side. Only into light rough though, and a bit of a punch bowl with this green. So we can hit down this side and we still keep a pretty good angle. I'd say off the tee this is like the easiest CC course we'd be looking for. I know I've been atrocious off the tee, but on every single hole we're basically offering up driver down the centre as like this is the way to play the hole. And that might be something I'd work out a bit more. Um, on the greens I think, and in fact this is a really good CC level course I think. Um, it might be a bit trickier on the greens than most, but I think because you're allowing driver as much as you are, that works quite nicely. So here's more a better example of like one that's pinched more. However, you've chosen to do this on the 500 yard par four with a green that's tilted and the angle away. Meaning if I don't want to take on what is the tightest tee shot so far, at least for my driver length, I'm laying back and I'm leaving a long way in which kind of forces my hand, but I think like, had you lengthen this one another 30 yards or so, great par five, like really good. Mm, hopefully that is holding. Oh, not quite. Only light rough though, so. Oh no, this is heavy and the other is light. Oh, Charlie, this is mean. How have I not noticed that? That explains a lot. Okay, suddenly this. Yeah, I think visually it works great, but it's very punitive if you do miss. Oh, well, my fault for not realizing that. Because uh, now we're hitting 187 to a green that's running away out of heavy rough. We're not ever holding this. So I think with this one, there's so many of the elements I really like. I really like the bunkers by the green. I like the angled green. I think the thing I would have really changed about this would have been the sloping away from the bunkers. That's the thing that we don't need and is tipping this over for me. Because you can play to this part and then the more receptive green on this long par four. I think it would just work better as a whole. Um, particularly as this pin is just like you are away from it no matter what. Nearly got a chip in. Oh, that moved loads. Yeah, deserved a pop, uh, bogey off that tee shot. That's the toughest so far, for sure. And I like that you've balanced it with a drivable, really short par four. That works nicely. Again, I think your fairway, your green sloping is a little bit severe because we can well, I mean, it is the challenge. So I guess the question is, for each of these pins, where would I play to? And why would I not drive it? Obviously the wind into, but why would I ever... So like for a back pin, for example, we're always driving probably into this bunker or even somewhere. Now that I know that this is light rough, I'm really tempted to drive into here. Um, and that might be how I do it on... Uh, that's the other thing. I think what we're doing is we're pit, with switching these two textures around, we are penalising slight misses over big misses, which is a little odd. Because um, I think if I were playing this on tour, I'd probably be hitting into this area most times if I'm not able to reach the green. I'm interested. 
because the mulch I don't think is too bad of a lie. Yeah, 90% pine straw. And I, it just feels a bit sad that that's a better option than just missing the fairway. Um, but additionally, again, with the green sloping and where we are on the fairway and the width that we have provided, let's get back to this. I'd have to be really getting to the very extremity of this fairway. This is kind of similar to um, 17 Old Wickham in that I felt my biggest critique on that hole, which I tried to change for this version, was not allowing enough space to lay up here so you could generate that angle. Because if you're here, you're, you've got nothing. And you can lay up, but you're kind of stitched up for the next shot. You might as well go for it. I kind of felt the same with Old Wickham. I never really had enough time in that contest to redo it. So, back to level. Good news. Back to dead downwind. So, in the same direction as... This is interesting, because this hole was in the same direction. One and two were in this direction as well, I think. Not exactly, but the wind has switched. Oh, okay, fine. Take it back. Kind of narrower fairway. Cool green. I would probably like to see some way of putting a pin behind here or creating some more green surface around this and maybe having it more side on green. Because this is a cool concept of just like that full front. It's like a little bit of a V shape. Again, I think the play is just, it's 450. Just try to hit driver down the middle, really. Ah, did not feel that. I don't really have any major comments on this one. I love the mounding around the green. I think it's all really well accomplished and it's the sort of course I really enjoy playing in real life. It's just, as a video game, when you're offering up the tee shots that much, is it really grabbing you? And with a Heathland course that's super low profile, the planting's doing a lot of heavy lifting here and that looks great. And it's a really nice relaxing round of golf, but that'd be the thing that I think we need to tweak a little bit. Okay, long par five. Love the little heavy mound, which again, you can see the planting where that green bush hasn't rotated. Uh, why would we go one way or the other? I guess it's kind of clearing the bunkers. Let me aim at it and trust that the wind and the fast will bring it round. But that's a clear choice of whether you take on your centerline bunker or not. And thereafter, we've got 250, which should just about get us there. It's probably a shame because I think this is where I think you might have envisioned this is like, if you, I guess if you lay up, you then have the decision as to whether you carry that great hazard or not. So that makes sense. And actually, I think it's quite nice that this one is reachable if you hit two really big shots. It's fun. You want to reward that. Oh, speaking of which, that's a cool cutaway as well. Uh, green itself, subtle with a fall off there. I really like the greens in there. This is a mean pin. I can't putt to these pins. There we go. Okay, hey, par three, let's have a showstopper. This looks awesome. Yep, really nice. Again, the question for me is surrounding this green directly with heavy rough and then light rough. Like that would be the, if I were judging this in the con a contest, this would be a major point I would be bringing up over and over again in the judging room because that would be something that I'd find really frustrating playing it if your slight miss is there, but you get a better shot from here when we know we can flip the textures and it probably didn't give you quite the same look but yeah it's one where i think playability trumps it but this is the best looking hole so far and one to really remember green itself 
yeah, challenging. Feels kind of similar to the other par three. I know it's a different green shape, but a lot of the slopes are very similar to that other par three that was angled on the front line, not the long one, I would say. Or four, maybe? Uh, I like the wasty style. I know it, for lack of a better word, the less formal bunker at the front. That looks really good. And the heather on it, just you've done a perfect amount of planting there. Great view all the way back to the clubhouse. Awesome layering there. Look. It's just all really solid. Okay. Smaller green goes front to back, which is good. And I like, therefore, that you've not over contoured. We've got a little bit of a dip in front, which is going to force us to think about pitch or full wedge. With that in mind, I might have shortened this hole just a little, so you kind of bait, bait people into hitting driver and leaving a pitch. So I think if I hit driver, I should still leave a full wedge. And I can kind of, again, pretty much put it down the middle. And knowing, knowing Charlie, I think you know all of the angle stuff and like you understand the whole strategy. It's just you need to gamify it a little bit more, for lack of a better term. It's like how do you adapt and make those concepts a little bit more extreme when everyone can hit the middle of the fairway? And obviously in the new game we're fighting for that balance because not everyone can. And it'd be I'd be really interested to know how this played on CC and how people shot and whether it was one of the easier weeks or harder weeks um, and what feedback you got from that. This is a great look. Love the staggered bunkers on this side. Heathery one up there. Awesome. We've got a side on green with a big contour in the front. That's That works really well. I think you probably want to magnify the the mound in front just a bit more. And 420, which kind of makes it feel like a very similar hole to the one we just had, purely because the distance is similar. I know the green is very different, but we're offering up the tee shot again. As you can see, I'm hitting basically the same shot in, which would be something I'd be trying to avoid as well in the routing phase. Oh, what a great shot. For someone commenting on the fact that I think you've made the course quite easy in spots, I'm not really shooting very well. Never professed to be able to play the game well. Ugh, left a horrible putt. Okay, three, four, five finish. Ooh, okay. Well, we know where this is inspired by. Um, little mound in front is how we play around it. I think the main thing I'd say about this is if I were going to do this, I would have used more of these elsewhere on the course. And like if you look at Sunningdale, they'll have little ones, like particularly where I think you're missing it all. They've got, um, what was Petty's one? Marlow Heath. Like those little heathery mounds around the sides of greens. Because when you introduce it like this, it feels very forced because we haven't seen any of them around greens before. If you're going to incorporate something like this, we'd want to have seen it elsewhere first. Um, and I, I think we've seen one like little heavy mound, but not very many. So therefore, when it's right in your face and very much part, the big part of the strategy, it feels like it's just come out of nowhere a touch. As a whole design, I really like it. Um, I. Probably with something like this, I'd be going for a more wide green, sort of like, is it 15 at Windstone? Grovey's one, which had the little mound in front that I think this is based on, or like similar to Strathlon Golf, which I based on Grovey's. Um, but the wider green allows you more options to get around the little mound, whereas here we're just hitting the perfect spot. And you notice here we've got a runoff and the slope is going to kick us off. Like you have to be really tight to it. And if you look at where it's landing, you're never getting a kick straight bounce so i think you're just asking for utter perfection on that side which kind of takes away from 
for my money ground game should be allowing more leeway for slightly missed shots rather than requiring the absolute perfect bounce. It would be just a little bit friendlier. I just realised we're only at half an hour. We're going to end up with a shorter episode on this one, but I don't have as much to say. Love this, and I would have liked to have seen more of this, where it's a dog leg, here's your line of charm, play further away, and it brings that bunker in. This green's really, really nice. Right, the ones where you brought the contours in more, I think, have worked better. I'm not sure how Heathland Deer is. It is, but you see fewer of them. See here, I'd almost like if my driver carry distance was to about here, so I could think about maybe challenging it downwind, and then the line of the fairway comes in. And this, again, equally if our tee shot angle is here, or about there, then you get the full benefit of where these bunkers are and where the edge of the fairway is. It's still solid, and I love that we can see that little green just left. Which works really nicely. Right, I've placed those bunkers. It's quite a long four, this one. So you can use this back pin. Works well, we needed one. Awful swing. Don't find the heavy rough. Got lucky. Slash helped by the look. And this green for this length, the hole that can play this length, I was into the wind, but works really nicely. So that's thought through carefully. I will say the greens, I think, for me, have been the strongest part of this course. Yeah, there's a few things we might change with them. But they all make sense, with probably the exception of that one par 5 on the front. Okay, 18. Par 5, closer. Hmm. This is the other thing you could have done, I think, a little bit earlier, was disconnect fairways just a touch. Because that, that always adds a bit of visual drama. Um... We're kind of offering up the tee shot a little bit again, although we can hug these as close as possible. I almost think because of the fairway cutting in this way, I know the green slopes make me want to come in from this side, but if I come in from this side, I've got less landing room to lap work with, whereas if I come from this side, I've got more. So I kind of want to be going here and just rolling it up that way. So right seems to me to be a bit easier from that point of view. Uh, I didn't see the wind pushing it that way. Oops, that's on me. Okay, so now we've got a forced layup, which is okay. I don't really mind it, because I've missed the fairway. And deserve everything I get. Obviously, I could just play into the light rough, but we'll, we'll try and keep it consistent. This looks great. Clubhouse view is awesome. Uh, you didn't expect me to be praising the clubhouse. And this is a really cool closing wedge shot. Like, I wouldn't have minded if this were a, oh, if that were a par four as well. That would be a really cool closing approach shot. I think the spacing around here works really nicely. The environment is one of the strongest aspects of this course as well. Um, well, we'll talk through like strengths and general stuff in a second. Definitely one of the shortest episodes we will do. Um, and there's good reasons for that. The main reasons, I would say, for that being so short, are I had a lot of the same things to say on many of the holes. Um, part of the reason for that were because a number of them played similarly. Part, a large part is because, not saying I didn't feel challenged off the tee, evidently I didn't hit very many fairways, and that's, but that's more to do with tempo. But I felt that the obvious shot most times was dead centre of the fairway. And I think if you're looking for your main thing to work on, I'd say it would be tee shot challenge. And like, because through challenge, you get memorability. So, for example, if I have to hit a really a specific tee shot in, and like there's a big carry to make or similar, well then suddenly that will make me think, oh, yeah, I remember that hole because of this tee shot or because oh I had to hit that shot and I hit that really great shot to hold the fairway there or... And I mean, I'm someone who try, I try not to pinch fairway too much, um, but you, you'd hopefully remember a lot of the tee shots that you hit. Um, I'm just looking at the scorecard, and I remember holes one and two feeling they were very similar, if not mirror images of one another. And they're very different yardages, so maybe memory is playing a trick on me there. Certainly nine was 
like in terms of going through the front line what do i remember i remember one and two were very similar i don't really remember them i don't don't recall three it was three the dog leg with the angled green um the fourth was the angled green par three but i couldn't really tell you much more about it uh either five or three was that angled par four but i can't remember which five was the by dinter being the only par five i remember far the six uh seven i really liked was the long par three that kind of gathered with the sort of eden slope and then either eight or nine played really long for me. Oh, eight was the punch bowl, which I liked. Nine was the really difficult one that just all the conditions were against me. Ten was drivable four where I hit into light rough. Um, yeah, I thought that I could maybe use a bit more danger around it rather than just kind of plotting for position. You want to have, like, whilst we want to incorporate all the strategic options with something like ten, you want to have that big risk in play for someone who is taking driver and to be honest for heathland courses in this game because we don't actually have heather you kind of have to manufacture that a little bit see ravines on wickham slash the addington or maybe bring in a little creek or something might have been a way of doing it you have to get a bit creative with it uh don't recall 11 i remember the greens getting a bit more mounded on the back nine and like bringing more of those contours in whether that was a conscious decision or not, that was definitely something that changed a little bit. 13 was awesome. Loved that par 3. Uh, don't recall. Oh, 12, obviously the long par 5, I do recall. Um, again, because it's one of the few par 5s. But beyond that, I'm struggling to differentiate the par 4s too much. Um, 16, I remember, because of the par, long par 3. 17 was a cool hole. I liked that. That would be one I would remember because I thought that was an interesting one and because it played into the wind that allowed me to play a slightly more creative shot. So I think part of it is like that memorability of holes and what shot we're playing. Um, the greens I thought were a real strength, but because they're so low profile, they're not doing much for the memorability either, um, which therefore like, everything is working against you in terms of you've got low profile, you've got a lot of holes that are dead straight and you're you're making the decision to be easy off the tee and tough but with subtle greens it's what's going to grab a golfer's attention so that would be the first thing um the second one um yes that's really it to be honest i don't think i have much else maybe whole distances um a little similar in places or how they play but Equally, I'm playing with the longest driver in a game where this was designed in the previous game. So that's kind of it. Fairway in red, 64%. Eesh. Um, so that's it. I mean, this is a great example of what this series is about. And that I can't pick up too much. But you can see with how I'm playing it, what's not there. Um, and the good to great bit, all you need is those like real world hole designs that you push a bit more to extremes. So see those realistic holes and then go well how can i tweak it so that it's a bit more applicable in game and memorable and that doesn't necessarily mean make it more difficult but it means encouraging players to take on a bit more risk than they currently are i think that's that's kind of how i'd sum it up hopefully you found that useful and um, thanks as ever for watching along and see you again soon